When you launch InDesign, I'm going to be telling you to do things, and I'm going to be telling you to use the view menu or the window menu or grab the type tool or the graphic frame tool and I'm going to describe it in terms of its location on your workspace and so it's really important that you sit down and you memorize the things that you're seeing on the screen right now. The menus are the items that are across the top of the page and so if I tell you to use the file menu or the edit menu or the layout menu you should immediately look to the very top of your screen. They're called menus. The next bar down in the default workspace or default arrangement of your workspace in InDesign is the application bar. And the application bar is not used too much for what we do in Art 1200, but you should still know that it exists. On the far right hand side is where you can change your workspaces. Um, I recommend using the typography workspace for all the projects in Art 1200 because the majority of what you need is already present on your workspace. You don't have to go looking in menus to find it. The control bar, the next one down, that's my favorite one. And that one's pretty cool because it gives you lots of things to do. And it changes depending on what tool you have selected on your tools panel, which is the long vertical column on the left hand side. Sometimes it'll be short and squatty, um, and sometimes it'll be long and skinny or tall and skinny. That's just the way that somebody's viewing it. If you double click the top of it, you can kind of rotate the way that it's viewed. Most people tend to like the long skinny column, but when I lecture, it's hard for me to show it all in one screen, so sometimes I will change it to be short and squatty. It's just a view preference. But what's cool about the control panel is that if you select the type tool, the options that you see across the top of your control panel, across the top of your screen, are going to be different than if you chose the graphic frame tool. Or in this case, it has the black mouse selected, which is the selection tool. And if you use the selection tool, you get specific features or things that you could change based on that tool. And so what I like to do is I just kind of click through the tools. And then even if I don't know what a tool does, I'll look at the control bar and I'll say, well, what does that do? And I'll kind of click around and play around with that. On the right hand side, I have highlighted here in purple, are your panels. And those are the panels that contain all of the things that you would want to do in InDesign. And you'll find very quickly that there's always three or four different ways to do the same thing in InDesign. And so for example, right here, there is a swatches panel. So I could open up the swatches panel, which are colors, and I could open it as a panel. I could go under the window menu, and I could open up the panel. I could select a tool in the tools panel that involves color, and then I could select the color across the top of the control panel. And so what I recommend is, as you're learning how to do different things in InDesign, if you know how to do something, just continue to do it that way until you find a better way to do it. And so what I'll usually do in my lectures is I'll show you two or three different ways to do the same thing. I'm not expecting you to memorize every single way to do something. Find the way that works for you and then, then just stick with that. But for right now, you need to know that menus are across the top of your screen. The next bar down is your application bar. Um, the light blue bar that's on your screen is your control bar. And to me, that's the most important of the ones that we're talking about right now. And that the features of that change depending on what tool you have selected. Your tools panel, or yeah, your tools panel is the one on the left hand side, and you're going to switch between those to do things on your workspace in InDesign. And all the way on the right hand side are where your panels are. Right now they're docked panels, or docked and nested panels, um, and they allow you to further do more things in InDesign. Um, workspaces are going to be personal. So you'll find a workspace that works for you or maybe you'll end up creating a custom workspace but you should know that workspaces exist and what they are. And so if I jump back one slide, uh, this is a workspace. It's the typography workspace and it's the way that the panels are positioned and arranged on your workspace or your active uh, artboard area. And so when I have the typography workspace set on the panel side, so everything else is going to look the same, it uh, doesn't matter what uh, workspace you have set, but on the panel side, I have the pages panel, the layers panel, the swatches panel, the glyphs panel, the text wrap panel, stroke panel, gradient panel, story, hyperlinks, effects, paragraph, paragraph styles, character, and character styles. Those are the panels that you would use most often if you're editing typography or words. And so if we go back to the slide that we're currently working on, you can see that there are a handful of different workspaces that you can choose. And depending on which workspace you choose, you're going to get a different arrangement of the panels. They might be grouped differently. Some of them may be open or closed. Some of them um, may be in different places, depending on which workspace you choose. But they're going to be determined by the topic that you're choosing. 
And so you can see in the little drop down here, you can change your workspace under the window menu workspace and then choose a workspace. Or on your application bar at the far right hand side, you should have a drop down menu that will allow you to choose one of the different options. I recommend typography for Art 1200 because most of what you need will just be hanging out there on the right hand side for you. But feel free to click through these and see what the different options um, provide you. For example, when we work on project number 11, our interactive PDF, I will recommend that you change your workspace to interactive for PDF, not because you know how to make those yet, but it will show you what's possible and you can kind of play around with those features or even just acknowledge that they exist and then go research and figure out uh, what they're used for. So feel free to click through those, see which workspace you, you tend to like yourself. Um, I recommend the typography one for Art 1200. And so if we jump back to InDesign, I'm going to create a new document. And I'm going to create it based on what I think the settings are for the project you're currently working on. But don't quote me on that. Always do the size of the, the project that's been outlined for you. So I think it's 5 by 7 with a minimum of 1 8 of an inch margins and standard printing bleeds. And standard printing bleeds are 1 8 of an inch. And so a lot of the times in your projects, I will tell you to add standard printing bleeds not because I'm trying to trick you, but because you should know that standard printing bleeds are 1 8 of an inch, 0.125. And that is one of the things you should leave this class and you should never get wrong in another class. So I'm going to go ahead and make that, that uh, project. And I'm going to go to the window menu workspace and then I'm going to uh, whoops, set the typography workspace. The typography workspace has a few key things. I already showed you that on the other slide, and so I'm not going to go back into those in detail. But if we switch, if we go to Window Workspace and we switch to, let's say, Book, you can see that you get a different arrangement of the panels. And so if we zoom in over here, you can see different panels are open and they're in different order. There's this index panel, conditional text, cross-references, things that I didn't even mention when we were talking about the typography workspace. If we change the workspace, so instead of going to Window and Workspace, if we come over here in the top right hand corner of our application bar, we can change the workspace as well. So I could choose, let's say, Digital Publishing. And these are all things that you would use if you're trying to maybe create an app through InDesign or Interactive for PDF. And I'm going to choose to reset that. And so can you see that the panels are kind of floating around and not really in a happy place? Uh, when you are working on or within a workspace, you have the ability to click and drag and kind of move things around. Um, if you grab the tab on the top of a panel, you can, right now these two panels are considered nested. They're nested together. If I grab and I drag and drop swatches, I could nest that guy in there too. You could pull these tab and you can unnest them. You can also dock things. So I could attach these two panels together. So I don't want swatches inside this. Maybe I want it to be below like this, but I want to always see them together. If I move the top panel, I want the bottom one to move as well. If you drag and you hover close to the bottom of a panel, you can, uh, you can dock them together. And so now they're not nested, they're not all in the same pile, and I can have two of these open at the same time. I can have either a line or Pathfinder plus swatches open. But now if I move one of the panels, they all move as a group. Okay, so back to my original point. Um, if you start moving things around your workspace, and although I have interactive for PDF set as my workspace, if I close things out or I undock things and I move them around, um, I can always go back to whatever the default was of that workspace by going back to where you selected the workspace, so either under Window, Workspace, and then uh, Interactive for PDF, or you can come to the drop-down menu on your application bar. But you can't simply choose Interactive for PDF because it will say, well, it's already set. And if you go to, let's say, Essentials, and then you go back to Interactive for PDF, it'll remember where you had those panels. But if you go to the bottom and you choose to reset your workspace, so I, currently I have Interactive for PDF selected, if you choose to reset the workspace, it will put it back to the default locations. And so when I make Interactive PDFs, I am notorious for making this Swift preview panel really big and previewing whatever I'm working on and then getting annoyed that it's in my way and closing it out. But you need that to test the interactivity of your interactive PDF. And so I am forever going back to interactive for PDF and resetting that workspace to get the panel to come back.